All right, we're back with Construction Business TV in the East Idaho area. My name is Tyson. I'm your local journalist and videographer for CBTV Idaho. We're on episode six of the Idaho Falls Auditorium series. I am joined here once again with Rob Spear, Executive Director of the Idaho Falls Auditorium District, and Malone Bullock, the Construction Manager for Bateman Hall. How are you guys today? Doing good. Tyson. You want to give us a little summary of what we've what kind of progress we've been seeing over the last 30 days? Yeah, obviously we had a little impact with weather this time of the year, but our contractors have done a good job. You can see behind us, Tyson, I was explaining earlier, you have that plastic area there. That's where the stair tower is going in on this end of the building. And it was really critical to get that stair tower complete and up to the top of that tilt panel. Unfortunately, the weather didn't cooperate the last few weeks, but this has been a great week. And I think moving on here, the sequencing is going to be <laughs> get the stair tower done, get the lower roof done, and then start working on that second level. And I'll ask Malone to describe some of the work that's already gone on in there. Let's hear so, that description. Yeah, so right here, the right now, it has been really cold and windy the past couple of weeks dealing with weather conditions. So right now, it's been really nice not having any wind. Because you see, if we had the wind, our tarp over the stair tower just gets shredded to pieces. So this week, no weather, good weather. We're getting that wrapped up. So we get the steel put in. And if the stays like this, the low roof deck can get down. That means we can work on the suite level decking where we can get that ready for the slab on grade for that suite level. Because if not, it's gonna be miserable for us, but that's what we're currently going on right now. We got our first pour that's been long anticipated on that suite level today. So it's yeah, a good tell, day for tell us. Tell us a little bit, Malone, about the importance of getting that pour on that second level, because as I understand it, we've got to have that second floor poured before we can start putting the big trusses on. Correct, so talking with the structural engineer um, on this project, the way he designed this, that we had to have that second level poured to help preload the structural columns as part of the strength, strength structure for the building. So it is key to get that done, and it's kind of not the best time to be pouring that suite level winter time, but we're, we're making it happen, it's working good, but once that's done, you start seeing these big trusses going up in the air. That'll be exciting, and to get those big trusses in the air, I think right behind us over here is that big crane. So tell us a little bit about this crane. It's a little larger than the ones that were out here on the tilt panel. Yeah, this is quite a little bit larger. So it has the first main boom on there is over 100 feet itself. Then the other jib, I like to call, is over another 100 feet. So they got to use this big of a crane where they can pick these big trusses up. They're about almost 100 feet long to swing them up over the building. So this is going to be one of possibly four cranes to help put these cr trusses in place and do the building. So Tyson, I think let's walk inside that bowl area and maybe we'll give the viewers a little bit better description of what's happening with the stair tower, the lower roof, and then of course that second level. And as Malone mentioned, excited that we got one pour done today. Let's go take a look. Tyson, we're inside here at the bowl area and I guess behind us, behind Malone and I, is a good example of, you can see that second level that lower roof area and they have a deck to this level and once this stair tower behind us gets done they'll be able to finish that decking but it looks like Malone we're going to be able to pour it to second level to where that decking is is that correct that is correct that's where we're kind of our goal is for this week if the weather holds up and we get things ready we're planning to win a second pour this week for a suite level on Friday so again very important to get these pours done so we can start doing the big trusses across the building and then dry in the bowl area. And once we get the bowl area dried, I think you're gonna be a little relieved. I know I will be. It will be. It's always a great day to get the roof on a building, start getting things dried in, because then you can start working on the finishes of the building. Yeah. Also, Tyson, you can see some of these uh, raker beams are called, Malone. Am I correct on that? Yep. And the raker beams are, that's where the fixed seating is going to go. So you can see the raker beams here. They're being prepared for the next step. Malone, tell us what the next step will be. What's going to go on those uh, raker beams? So these raker beams are the structural support for the precast stadium seating. So there'll be precast panels that'll be delivered once we get the roof on that will be unloaded inside this arena and picked up by cranes to send in place. This will let the those are kind of watch the event or a game will be sitting on for the fixed seating and non-fixed seating to be on. And Fantastic. the precast process has already started, right? That's being done in Salt Lake, as I understand. Yeah, it. so the precast panels are being fabricated by another company off-site, and that'll be delivered here and shipped. 
and everything looks good. No supply chain issues with As that. far as we know, they got them all ready. Yeah. They're just ready to get put on, tr on trucks and shipped here. Okay, fingers crossed. Fingers <laughs> crossed, yeah. Right now we're right outside the convention space, which is now the Blue Cross of Idaho convention space. And the good news is we were able to, I shouldn't say we, the contractor and Malone and the crew, were able to get this back end of the house dried in before the severe weather hit. So as we get inside, you'll see a lot of work that's going on right now and will continue throughout the winter. So that's good news. Malone, tell us a little bit about this exterior here. So this exterior is kind of like a Sure, it's kind of a, not a sheet rock, but it's more structural than that, but this is what we call our nice fancy green screen. <laughs> <laughs> so, but this is the exterior panels will have to be sealed, then it will be, how, as people call it Tyvek, but our commercial wrap, to help keep moisture and wind out of the building and make it a little more airtight. Then it'll have the same finish as the rest of the building where I have the nice the brick color and some of the precast put on there. Yeah. So this is, this entryway, I think the entryway on the other side, and of course the main entryway, they couldn't be done, the brick couldn't be done in the tilt panel process. So it had to be separate and they're gonna, the, the brick will be laid manually with those. Correct, so these entrances were metal stud framed instead of the tilt up like the rest of the building. Then they'll have the brick and all that stuff add on to those panels to make the same appearance look, yes. Well, let's go inside and take a look. Well, here we are inside the convention space, looking at what's going on inside here today. And as you can see behind us, all kinds of work going on. Malone, tell us a little bit about what the various subcontractors have been able to accomplish during this time. So during this time in the winter months, like you said, Rob, we, we kind of got this back porch and closed off. We're sending the heat in, so we have our subcontractors working. Until we got a lot of the walls get framed in for this convention space which can be divided up into four different rooms for different activities. We also got some HVC work going in on electrical. So we're working on the MVP rough-in, trying to get all the stuff put in the space so we can keep on going. We're over towards where the locker room space is going to be. We're just outside the loading dock area. And Malone, what's that section right over there? So kind of over here where you're talking point to, Rob, is this where the main mechanical rooms for this yep. building is, where one of the mechanical rooms is for the ice, equipment for the for the hockey rink to keep it chill to keep it cool and also the mechanical panels electrical panels for the running the whole building then also back here like i said this will be all the locker rooms behind us since we got the roof on here we've been making pretty good when there's windy weather or bad weather we've been able to work back here by doing a lot of hvc duct work and, and electrical roughing back you know and milan if I, I think that's the ice melt pit right there correct yes yeah, so that concrete wall you're pointing to that is the back part of the ice melt pit, yeah. where all the Zambonis who skim the ice or whatever have to come back and empty out and dump it into that. Yeah. So interesting, when you have a hockey facility as part of the overall structure, it just adds to layers of complexity. As you mentioned, you got to have a separate mechanical room, and then of course you got all the components to go into that ice rink system. Correct. So that rink is all solely isolated by itself. There's right now we have pipes running underground to house that to keep it chilled. So Rob, with that, this building is not just going off of ice hockey, right? What else is going to be done in that well, okay, arena area? Well, Carrie, thank you for that. You know, ice hockey that we're going to have—that's going to be the anchor tenant, of course. But this is truly going to be a multi-purpose event center. It's going to be able to have family shows, sporting events like basketball. We want to be able to host high school state tournaments on this side of the state. We now have a facility to do that. You know, musical groups, comedy acts, trade shows, and especially, you know, this is event center is more than the event center because you have the right. conference space as well so we'll be able to attract a lot of different conferences a lot of educational seminars trade shows and evergreen events fly fishing expos hunting expos which are great for our area yeah. so again it's going to be a true multi-use multi-purpose event center so this is not just like you said it's not just an ice hockey ring that's probably the sole when ice hockey's league season that's what I'll be going on yeah, with other events in between those games. You know, looking at the, the event days that will be held here, we're looking at about 160 event days on average. Only 26 of them are hockey. So a lot of people say, well, you're building an athletic facility. No, we're really not. It's going to be everything that we can use it for 
uh, the athletic components will probably be 20% okay. of the time at most. So, well, that's good. I think it'll be a great addition to the community if we're able to do all these different events from this arena. I think so, you know, and I think as it evolves, we'll find out what the community really wants to see, and then we'll focus in on those events. But to start, we're going to throw out a little bit of everything for everybody. Sounds good. Okay, we're back outside. We decided to do our uh, closeout outside where it's a little, you can hear us a little bit more. The enclosed back of house, people are hard at work and making all kinds of noise back there. But it, it was always the goal to have that enclosed before the Idaho winter set in so that you guys can continue, continue working through the season. And it looks like you guys made that goal just fine. Yeah, we're making progress and, you know, let's keep our fingers crossed next couple of weeks we have some good weather. So the next time we're together, hopefully we can show a little bit more progress on that bowl roof structure. So Malone, looking forward, what can we look forward to seeing? So, over the next couple of weeks, like I said, we'll hopefully finish that sweet level pouring of concrete on that slab there. And also we'll start seeing trusses going up in the air. That's our ultimate goal is get those big things in the air, start getting that decked and get the roof on in there as soon as we can, start closing that in. So that's what you look forward to seeing here in the next few weeks from this project. I'm looking forward to it. I know that the viewers at home are looking forward to it for episode seven. It'll be of the Idaho Falls Auditorium series. Thank you guys for watching. If you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe to Construction Business TV on YouTube. My name is Tyson and I'm your local journalist and videographer for CBTV Idaho. You guys take care.